Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Ben. Today we are proceeding. Now before we proceed, uh, last time we wrote some JavaScript on our Blade template. So today I want to remove this JavaScript because we have the app.js here. I want to go to our resources app.js and just after bootstrap I want to add my JavaScript there. Then it means here that I'll have to delete this. Okay. So that now instead of having a very large script here, we'll just have it inside our app.js and in case someone just lands on it, on our app.js, it looks like this. Just beautiful, right? Yeah, so let me close this. Now, uh, today we are just going now to do register URL and also we are going to do simul to simulate a transaction in this video. So let me go to my developers portal, Darizo. And then we go to C2B and I want to look at the body here. Let me go to the PHP here. So we can either just copy this and this is going to be very interesting. So let's go first of all and write that method. So inside our M-Pesa controller, just down here, let's document it. And this is a register URL. We'll have a public function. Register URL. You don't need anything. Then here we'll just write our body. So we'll just have body is an array. This array contains the short code. And here we have the we have it on our environment, which is Mpesa short code. Then we'll have a type of response that we just want here. And we'll just go and get we'll have it down here. And response type that you want is completed can have either completed or cancel. I don't know why we want to cancel, but uh, yeah, this is going to work. Then here we'll have our confirmation URL. Actually, let me just write it. URL, and it's going to be here. Then we'll have again our validation URL, which is going to be here. Now, this is the point where I was telling you that you need to make sure that you have Grok installed, yeah? On our ENV, we have the M-Pesa test URL, this one. So this is what we're going to have here. So M-Pesa controller, ENV, like that, and then we'll add our route, and I want it to go to our API. Then we'll have confirmation. Give it a different name, please. And uh, also make sure that it's as secure as possible. So you can just do like this and do something here. Then we'll again need and we'll have that. Then inside here we'll have API and the route that we want is validation, like that. So we are going to set up this one and then we're going to write as well this. So first of all, let's write this endpoints. So I'll open my API route, this comments. So it'll have a route. So automatically this is API route, so we don't need to provide. So just have validation. And now we had created, okay, we have just one controller, yeah? So let me create another, con let me have another controller that will handle the responses because that's what I want to use. So on my terminal here, I have my mix watching it for the changes because of the JavaScript that I'm writing. So here we'll have um, PHP artisan serve, ah, not serve, sorry, make controller. And my controller is inside the payments, Mpesa, and we have Mpesa responses controller, like that. Remove this error here first, so let's run it again. Perfect. So we have now our controller here, which will deal with responses, so I just need it. Go to my API and comment this, and then we, as we said, initially we have here is an array class and the method that we want to access will be validation like that we definitely don't have this class so let's import it and then we need to go to that method and write this one so in this class i'm going to save to probably database um, but the code will be available so public function validation and validation will need just to log it right so let me log info don't see validation endpoint 
when we receive an, a response, I just want to see that uh, validation endpoint has been hit. Then we have log info, and I just want to get whatever I have on this endpoint. So let me just also add my request here. Perfect. We'll need to import this log, otherwise we'll have an error. All right. Then I'll just need to duplicate this method for confirmation. Very important. Let me just call it confirmation like that. And here we'll say well, uh, confirmation. Great. So let me just again go back here and I'll just duplicate this. And here we'll have confirmation like that. So for register URL, we need those two. And I'll also need to change these to confirmation. All right. Now that we have those, um, we'll go back to our blade. And on register URLs here, we'll just attach an ID, register URLs. Okay, then we'll go to our JavaScript and have an event attached on this one. So we'll just do a document, get element by ID. What do you want? We want that one. Then we want to add an event listener here. This event listener that you want is a click. And then here we'll just serve the event again to prevent default activity so event prevent default like that that's perfect then we'll just need to again to use axios hit our endpoint for register urls and uh, what we want here is nothing actually dot then so here we just log response dot data and if there was an error catch an error and log error perfect i'm not sure that we have this so let's go and create it so it is on our web route let's need to copy this and duplicate it then here we'll have register urls and here i want it to go to our register url method Perfect. Uh, something else that I might have missed on a previous tutorial is you need also to make sure that you've provided this on your meta tag so that now you don't need, uh, you don't get the document as expired. So that way now this will work. So let's just run and see what will happen. So add inspect so that you can see the log. I'll go to console. Here we have, uh, okay, so let's try token, it is working. Now let us also try register URLs, it returns nothing. Okay, one sec, go to our Mpesa controller and actually we're not returning anything, yeah. So let us now get response here. And this is uh, this make http and remember we used to pass the url here and for url i'll also do the same as i've done the other the other one i'll just need to do the same as this one so i'll copy let me bring it uh, but then i'll need to change the urls here so i'll delete this and this one then i'll go to our mpesa portal and copy this then let's have it here and because this is Live, we change it to API, then our sandbox remains here. So the first thing that this expects is the URL, and then the body, like that. Okay. So something else that we've not provided is our test URL. So I'll go to my desktop and fire up uh, Grok. So here I am. This is Grok. So I like the clicking on it, then just typing Grok HTTP, and the port that I want to expose is 8000. And there you go. Just copy this for HTTPS, go to my environment, and uh, paste it here. We still don't have the M-Pesa shortcode, so I'll just write it uh, from the M-Pesa test uh, portal. Sometimes you don't get it, uh, so you have to write an email to them. So I'll also share the link on how to apply or to request for the shortcode. So I'll just write the shortcode 603021, which is what I have right now. So let's go and run this again so we'll just go to my console and register okay we're still missing a lot we haven't returned this one so after that we'll just come here and return response like that and then let's run it again 
there you go we have uh, an invalid shortcode and probably it's just the spelling the shortcode should have capital C should be in camo case so let me just come here and change this to shortcode like that then run it again there you go so it has been accepted successfully so let us just show uh, the responses here so we can show if there was an error or if there wasn't an error okay so in my app.js we can let me first of all have something here so after on register url body let's have div dot response let me just do like that so on our app here we'll just check if response dot data dot uh, what we're looking for is if we'll have a response description okay like that if we have it then that's what we're going to show so we'll just do again get uh, document dot get element by id get element by id and this time we want to get the id response and we want to do dot in html and we want to show response dot data dot response description else if we don't have it it means we have an error so we will again just show on that on the same we'll have response dot in html and we'll say this response dot data dot error message which is actually what we we get we got the first time here like that so uh let's run it again then run it then you can see we have no success if we just go and mess up something small and run it again you have your error response there so thank you very much for watching and let's meet in the next video